Hello, it is Friday, June 23rd, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Friday puzzle today, so our first of two themeless crosswords for the week, just solving, just crossword solving, just clue solving, no themes. So this uh, solving only edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Jenny Montague, Lewis Williams, Camtron, and as always, the invaluable Timothy Mark, the indomitable Shoalmaster, and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the six of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for your generous support. You are sustaining this channel, keeping it going. For that, I am very appreciative. So thank you so much. And if you'd like to look into that whole project, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve. Click the link in the description field underneath the video, uh, alternatively. And there you'll find all of the bonus videos available to patrons of the channel. And thank you too, so much to everybody who is a patron. Thank you if you have been one or are one currently. I really do appreciate it. Um, thank you also if you've subscribed to the channel on YouTube. Don't forget to consider doing that or just go ahead and do so if you've been enjoying these videos or consider telling a friend. I haven't mentioned that recently. If you think you know somebody who might enjoy this kind of material. And finally, there's the Daily Solve Discord chat server, a nice friendly place to discuss the New York Times crossword, Wordle, other puzzles, other crosswords. And uh, there's a link to that in the description field as well. So with that all said, let's get on to today's crossword. This is a Friday puzzle and a debut construction at that by Kunal Nabar. And um, it was edited, of course, as always by Will Shorts. There's no theme, so all we're going to be doing is solving clues. And let's do just that. Let's start solving. Like some commitments and knowledge. Well, you could have prior knowledge or prior commitments. That works. So let's look at the crosses on that. Game played on yaks in Mongolia and Pakistan. Well, the the main sort of mounted game that I know is polo. Uh, not that I know from the sense of ever having played it, but um, I am aware of the existence of polo, and perhaps that's played on yaks in Mongolia and Pakistan, which is extremely interesting. And let's let's see if we can confirm that via some crosses. State flower of Utah. Okay, well, again, I'm chaining, I'm chaining an assumption onto an assumption here, but in four letters ending with O, my guess here would be Sego, which I'm pretty sure that's a flower, so it could well be the state flower of Utah. Let's see, can I confirm this any better with a kind of bi-directional crossing? Coded material, okay, well, coded material could be RNA, uh, RNA into DNA, sort of, you know, genetic encoding. Scintillas are iotas, so small, oops, very small bits of something. It's just not one scintilla, not one iota, you could say. And uh, let's see, do I have anything with these long answers yet? Playbills, question mark. That's interesting. So playbill, ordinarily, I would think it's the, uh, well, it's a brand name, but it's, the, um, but it's that booklet distributed at Broadway productions before... Um, you know, that includes information and advertising and plot summary and things like that. Uh, but what is this? Playbills. Why is it? Why is there a, why is there a question mark? What is the pun here? I'm just not sure. Refresher course. Also a question mark. Okay. I'm not sure. What about this? Dance components or steps. You could have several steps of a dance and here, 18 across a bit of French. Je suis à toi. I'm all yours. Um, I am to you, I suppose that literally means. Ingratiating, ingratiating sort. Hmm. Too long for me to jump straight to it. What about this one? Genre for uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez and Haruki Murakami. Well, they, um, I've read some of their work, they are certainly magical realists. So magical realism could be the genre here. And a refresher course is, oh, a palate cleanser. So a refresher course, a course in this case, meaning the course of a meal. Oh, that's very, that's a very clever clue. So you could have a bit of a palate cleanser to uh, refresh yourself between uh, maybe very heavy or extremely flavorful or, or complex dishes. Oh, that's pretty good. I think sorbet is, is classically a palate cleanser. Okay, theme park originally conceived as a planned community. That is 
Epcot in Walt Disney World. I've never been there, but I, I know that it stands for Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow, I believe. And Walt Disney had conceived it, as this indicates, as a, uh, a sort of forward-looking, um, progressive uh, whole town, I suppose. It's, it was, and it, it ended up becoming more of a kind of themed, uh, kind of globally themed uh, amusement park, I suppose. All right, city formerly known as Christiania. Oh, Oslo. I think I've actually, I think I was aware of that for some reason. Um, I've never been to Oslo. I'd like to go to Oslo. One who's got the goods, a seller. So someone who sells their goods, straightforwardly enough. Uh, there is a question mark there, though. So because the phrase, one who's got the goods, you think someone who uh, is sort of being honest with you or they they have the thing they claim to possess uh, is what that would mean idiomatically. But the question mark means we're treating this in a punny sort of way. We're not We're not using the standard English idiomatic meaning. And so in this case, it just means someone who's literally... Uh, in possession of goods that they sell. Oh, an ingratiating sort is a people pleaser. So they might ingratiate themselves to you. They might sort of attempt to, uh, you know, ameliorate you, please you, or, or what have you. Okay, it might be sold by the yard. You could have, you could sell a yard of ale. That's a kind of nice sort of quaint, uh, quaint phrase. And the capital of Eritrea is, ooh, as. Asmara? Close, let's see if this, if this works. Close line, seam, dronesy, G, R. Oh, males, right, okay. Of course, our first thought would all be robotic things, but um, drone bees are, are males, okay. Some stage whispers are aside, so you're on stage and deliver something sort of sotto voce, you kind of deliver it as an aside. Frankincense and myrrh, but not gold. Uh, are they are they resins? I mean, gold is obviously not a resin. Frankincense and myrrh. I mean, they're sort of, you know, they have strong scents, right? So that could they could be resins, maybe. That sounds very plausible to me. Uh, these are obviously associated with the the the, the wise men in the biblical story of Jesus' birth. And then oil and film for two are media, film media. So, oh, sorry, well, sorry. So <laughs> oil is a painting medium and film is a medium for motion pictures. That's what I mean. So plural, they are media. Uh, Galleon's company would be an armada. So you could have uh, an armada, a fleet of ships, and a galleon is a, is a ship of war and could be part of such a company. Government organization since 1946, the Social Security Administration, part of the, um, you know, the post-war war welfare state that was constructed, and uh, I think that's it. Oh no, it's not. Button often indicated by a forward arrow is the send button. Um, closed line seam. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, Asmara worked out great. So. Yep, that's all correct over there, it looks like. To divide appropriately is to... Um, oh, why don't I see this? I feel as though this is on the tip of my tongue, and yet I can't get it. Infuriating. Uh, credit cards are plastic, so um, often people refer to paying with credit cards as paying with, paying with plastic. Um, I suppose there was that sort of cheeky line you used to get at a checkout, which was paper or plastic, because obviously... In one meaning, that refers to paper bags or plastic bag, but in another meaning, it could refer to paper bills or plastic credit cards for payment. Um, things have really changed dramatically, obviously, in recent years. Um, parliament owls, oh, sorry, par a parliament of owls is akin to a raft of otters. So this is an, an, uh, an analogy, which is classically read, parliament is to owls as raft is to whatever our missing word is. And in this case, that must be otters. So you must have a, a group of otters must be a raft of otters. I don't think I knew that. Oh, divide appropriately prorate. So if you have, if you're being paid pro rata, you could have your payment kind of divided appropriately 
to the amount of time you're working in practice. Um, and that's what that would be. Many a Zoroastrian could be a Rani. That's a, um, an ancient a sort of religion associated with that part of the world. Uh, displayed dislike in a way sneered at or just sneered perhaps if you didn't like something you might sneer at it that could be the answer uh, 100 is a high one informally high push impel you sort of pr propel something you, you push something forward you impel it forward so 100 oh i see in in degrees fahrenheit 100 is a high temperature well in degrees in degrees celsius it's uh, even higher but um there we go Mine is, you could have a pit, the pit mine, a pit of mine. And an apt cry of encouragement for a pilot. Keep it, keep it up. <laughs> it's apt because of course the pilot keeps the aircraft up. So one would hope they don't need that kind of encouragement. One hope they, hopes they would do that as a matter of course. Target of a biometric scanner is, could be the retina of your eye. And narrative device used on Groundhog Day. This is the the excellent um, film in which the uh, Bill Murray character has to repeat the same day again and again. Oh, time! Yes, okay, time loop. There we go. Just had to talk that through for a moment until the concept popped into my head. And roast figures are MCs. You could have an an MC of a roast, a master of ceremonies of a roast who is um, who is honoring you through good-natured insult. And if something's overly slick, it's un... Uh, I don't see it immediately. Mountain path is a pass. You could have a pass through the mountains. And participants in a November parade informally are uh, vets, veterans for Veterans Day, I suppose, in the U.S. And then Betamaxes, e.g. Uh, VCRs. So Betamax was a... Uh, I suppose a competing format to VHS of uh, video cassette tapes. So VCR video cassette recorder would have been configured for one of those two formats. A group defending trans rights could be the ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union. And oh, overly slick is unctuous. So you can describe you could describe food maybe as having an unctuous taste, but you could also describe a person as sort of an an oily person as being kind of unctuous. A pro bono promo could be a PSA, a public service announcement, which is offered pro bono. It's offered um, free of charge to the, the publication or network that is running it. And letters seen all around New York City. It could be the MTA, the uh, Transit Authority, which I suppose you, you, you do see those letters all over New York City. That could be the answer. Let's look at the crosses here. Anchor's Place, a newsroom. So you could have a news anchor in a newsroom on a, a television network. And if some if something dehydrates, it dries out. You could dry something out, dehydrate it, dehydrate it. Play blank, sit in with the band. You could play a set with the band. Maybe you're not a member, but you're sitting in playing a set. And Michelle, this is a name I do recognize, Michelle Wee West of the LPGA. There we go. I don't think I was familiar with her, with West. Is that a, is that a, a married name? I always just heard Michelle Wee. Uh, let's keep looking. Editor, so uh, she's a golfer, by the way, in case you are not familiar with the, the initialism for the Ladies Professional Golf Association. And editorial overruling is stet. So in punctuation markings, or sorry, not punctuation, in kind of editorial markings or revision markings, um, stet means actually ignore the correction that was written here. Just keep it as is. Okay, roughly one third of the Earth's surface. Desert, I suppose. That's, that is sort of astonishing to think, but I suppose it, it, it does stand to reason. Features of some Japanese gardens are... What are they? What about this? Parties. Could be dues. Um, this is an incredibly common standby of British cryptic crosswords. A party being called a do. If you see a party or something like that in a British cryptic crossword definition, it may very well mean that you need to use the letters D-O somewhere in the answer. Like many gift packages and old messages, uh, I, 
don't know. I'm curious what the answer to that is, but I don't immediately see it. Top present during the holiday season. Top present. Top. Does it mean a sort of top that you wear? Could it be something like a Christmas jumper, Christmas sweater? Oh, a dreidel. No, 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 not that kind of top. It's a kind of top that you spin. So a dreidel for, for, uh, for Hanukkah. There we go. Okay. Very clever clue. Again, top present during the holiday season. That's very good. Very subtle. And of course, we do have the question mark to clue us in that something like that is going on. Features of some Japanese gardens are... Oh, koi ponds. Right. Okay. I was trying to think of a single word, but here we have two words. Koi ponds. So ponds for koi fish. There we go. And quick impression as of a person. A read. You take a read on somebody or quick impression of them. Like... Many gift packages and old messages. Oh, taped. That's a very clever clue as well. So you could tape up a gift package to seal it, uh, but also old messages prior to, well, maybe not prior to digital recording, full stop, but prior to the ubiquity of digital recording, many messages were taped on cassette tape, such as in an old answering machine. Okay, unmo something's unmoving. It's inert uh, and... Opportunity for an amateur, maybe. Mm, I can't immediately see it. That's frustrating. Apt cry of encouragement for a geology ro geologist. Rock on. So here's similar to our pilot. Keep it up. Oh, and in fact, that they follow directly. They're com they're completely. Um, well, they're well. Of course, they're parallel because they're both down clues, but they're aligned vertically. Okay. Anyway. Uh, what else have we not seen? Spanish American cowboy. Oh, am I going to know this? I probably will when I see it. Frustrating that I can't jump to it right now. What about this one? Big name in family music. Oh, the Osmond family. That was a musical family. Oops, that was completely correct. Incorrect. Uh, boy, this looks so familiar. Spanish American cowboy. It's infuriating that I can't. I can't connect the dots myself. What about this one? Opportunity for an amateur. Am I any closer to this? Oh, an open mic for an amateur, say, stand-up comedian, perhaps. And then singer-songwriter Paul Anka is a singer-songwriter. And playbills are... Oh, Monopoly money. Oh, that's a very clever clue. So here we have Yanero, Lanero, um, which I do recognize to... to to read, but not so much to say, <laughs> embarrassingly. Um, playbills, and that's the that's the Spanish American Spanish American cowboy. Um, playbills are monopoly money. I really that's a very clever clue because they're sort of bills. They're uh, you know banknotes. They're uh, currency that you'd use to play with. You'd use them to literally play a game. In this case, the game Monopoly. So monopoly money are playbills. That's very clever. Blank by that kiss, I vow an endless bliss. Hmm. Okay, and Mulder on the X-Files, E.G. informally. Well, he's... Is he a G-man, a government man? Um, you know, he's a, he's a federal agent, the character Fox Mulder on the X-Files. So I think that's probably the case. Horror struck. Yeah, you're, if you're horror struck, you're aghast. You're completely aghast. You're, you're, you're horrified. And... I, by that kiss, I vow an endless bliss. Keats. Okay, there we go. That is the answer to that poem. Could we call that an ode? And sharp now is honed, as in a blade has been honed. It's sharp now. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe. Reinvented self. Well, this could be the new me. You've reinvented yourself. You're new. What a key provides. A key could provide the answer. You could have an answer key to it, to an exam or something. And fitting, if something's fitting, it's seemly, it's appropriate, it's not out of kilter. And political convention attendees are delegates, probably, in this case, uh, delegates sent to a political convention. And actor Gibson of the Fast and Furious franchise, Tyrese, maybe? I don't recognize this name, but that is, well, I mean, I recognize it as a name uh, that exists, but I don't recognize the actor's name, Tyrese Gibson. I hope it's the answer. And yes, it is, because here we have ingredient in some flour. It could be rye. You could have you could have rye flour used to make rye bread. And there we go. That was the Friday crossword. There we go. A nice, pleasant Friday crossword. 
not too difficult for a Friday, I would say. It's on the on the gentler side for a Friday, probably. Let me know if you found that to be the case. And I just noticed something I hadn't noticed until now, hadn't hadn't bothered to to particularly uh, examine, is that this crossword is diagonally symmetrical, by which I mean at this 45 degree angle running from the northwest to the southeast corners of the grid, if you folded the crossword over along that that di diagonal axis, you would see that the black cells are disposed identically. They would they would map on to each other to 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 one another uh, perfectly. That is unusual for the New York Times crossword. Certainly not extraordinarily unusual, but definitely not the most common configuration, which is radial symmetry when the the crossword is radial. Um, by way of 180 degree rotation. So ordinarily, that that's the way in which the crossword is is uh, symmetrical around 180 degree rotation. But in this case, we have this diagonal. And often, when you get an unusual symmetry in the New York Times crossword, it's because the theme requires something to be uh, fit into the grid in a certain way, and so that the grid needs to be constructed that way. Or it's because there's particular art in the illustrations with the black cells that that is required. In this case, it's a themeless puzzle. So it was just, I suppose, maybe the constructor wanted to get these particular crossing answers in. I mean, we, this is nice. We do have these incredibly long crossing answers, palette cleanser and people pleaser, and then uh, magical realism, monopoly money. They're, they're all sort of crossing each other in their first letters and spanning, spanning almost the whole grid. So it is nice. Uh, that is interesting. Uh, but there we have it. That was the Friday crossword. Hope you enjoyed it. And before we uh, conclude this video, let's just look at a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. I didn't grab everything, I just grabbed a few, and here we go. Uh, Time Gentleman explains, I don't think you realized, or at least mentioned this, apologies if I missed it, but the misdirection in the clue for names is that Bob and, Karis and Ted, Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice is the name of a 1969 movie starring Natalie Wood, Robert Culp, Elliot Gould, and Diane Cannon. It was later adapted into a 1973 TV series. Thank you. I knew those names were familiar, Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice, but I couldn't I couldn't place it. And you're right. And I think you're additionally correct that that is, that is the nature of the sort of light misdirection in that clue. You're supposed to think of that film, but of course, uh, so maybe you think of movie, which is also five letters long, but in any case, there we go. And Stephen Giblin explains the Bucks are the Milwaukee NBA team. So there we go. I inferred they must be an NBA team. I didn't know which one, and that is who they are. And then also separately explains on bank, E-N-B-A-N-C, which was uh, bank was an, was an entry in yesterday's puzzle, is the term used to describe when the entire group of judges in a particular federal court hear an appeal instead of just a three-judge panel. Uh, and then he has some additional explanation of some mistakes I made in filling the grid that, that came back to bite me later. Uh, but regarding the theme, observes, the key word in the revealer was admonition. So you're admonishing someone to be quiet so as not to wake the baby by saying shh. And yes, that, that, that's what I took it to mean to say, uh, mean as well. Um, it's not that I didn't understand the relevance. It was just that uh, that I, I, I couldn't get the kind of revealer to be a hint as quite as directly as I usually think of them as being. And finally points out, you never went back to 26 down a USB connection, a type of connection, which was the a USB type. So thank you for that. Uh, finally, Brian Spurrier explains that the company, the, the service VRBO, Vacation Rental by Owner, is pronounced Verbo as opposed to VRBO as I pronounced it letter by letter. So I suppose that makes it an acronym because we pronounce it like a word, a Verbo. And thank you for that. All right. Well, that's that. That's today's Friday crossword. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back tomorrow, of course, for the Saturday crossword. Another themeless puzzle should be a little bit trickier than this one. Maybe fewer question marks to tell us when the puns are coming. And uh, I hope you join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Friday. Take care. Mm -hmm.